most people search for what is easy. The giants, however, they search for a challenge. Whatever that challenge may look like in your personal life, in search for the pleasure of Allah, and each one of us has his personal challenge he or she wants to overcome. Comfort is easy. Most people search for what is easy. The greats, they search for a challenge. They don't live in this horrible, dark zone called the comfort zone. They are always on the other side of it because they realize that every good in this dunya and success in the hereafter is available, but it's on the other side of the comfort zone. There was a man called Bill Ekstrom, and he is the co-author of a book called The Coaching Effect. And he studied over 100,000 coaching interactions between coach and coachee, mentor, mentee, teacher and student, to try to understand what is it that brings success and growth in people. And after this long study, he concluded the following, your success in large is determined by your willingness and your comfort in making yourself uncomfortable. Then others, they took this theory and they made what they called the comfort zone framework. This framework suggests that for you to grow as a human being, you need to go through three distinct stages at least. The first of these zones is called the comfort zone. Most of humanity live and die within this zone, comfort zone. It's a great place to be. Why? Because it's a place of familiarity. When you're within your comfort zone, you're with your family, you're with your close circle of friends, you're not challenging yourself to be somewhere or to do something that's outside of your custom, you're comfortable because you can control the factors. There's no surprises. You're not being mentally strained. You're not being physically challenged. You're on autopilot, like driving, like watching TV. This is called the comfort zone. And here your brain will produce happy chemicals like serotonin and dopamine. It keeps you buzzing. There's nothing scary to expect. But the only problem within it is that nothing ever grows in that zone. Things only deteriorate. And there was a study that was conducted on 2000 participants. And the results were amazing. The results suggest that over half of Brits, 55% to be specific, are stuck in a day-to-day -day routine with nothing different. Their yesterday is a mirror reflection of today and their today is a mirror reflection of tomorrow, day-to-day. -to -day. That's over half of the population. And just under a third of the population, 31% to be specific, can't even remember the last time they did something uncomfortable or challenge themselves to walk out of their comfort zone. So the moment you choose to sleep, instead of going for a run, for example, or going to the gym, you have chosen comfort, temporary, immediate comfort, but not for long, because discomfort will catch up with you soon or later. The moment you press your snooze button on your phone to delay Salatul Fajr, and you're praying at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock when the sun is fully risen, you've chosen comfort but not for long, because if tawbah is not met, there will be discomfort eventually that will catch up. You know someone who left employment, a perfectly legit source of income, although it's maybe minimum wage, or someone who left study. Why? Because they want comfort. They will tell you that was only temporary. Now we are weeping the tears of bitter regret. We're very uncomfortable now because of those decisions. And let me tell you another problem with this comfort zone. The more you stay inside of your comfort zone and you don't challenge yourself to grow as a Muslim, your comfort zone actually gets smaller. The walls begin to close in on you. What does that look like? Say for example, you're only comfortable hanging out with 10 people. 10 brothers. You don't like to hang out with anybody else. If you stay like that, it gets smaller, your comfort zone. So now you're only comfortable with eight of them. And a few years later, it's just five of them. And the next thing you know, you're a complete loner. You're cut off. No one wants to talk to you. You don't want to talk to anyone else. The comfort zone doesn't, get, doesn't stay the same size. It gets smaller. You only go to the masjid once a week, right? For example, only once a week because you're comfortable with that. Anything more is uncomfortable, fine, but that's going to get smaller. And even going to the masjid once a week becomes a little bit difficult now when you're trying to find your way out of that obligation. But the opposite is true. When you find new challenges as a Muslim, new challenges of growth, you meet new people, you plan for your religion, you learn something new, you're uncomfortable. Guess what? The borders of the comfort zone grow to meet you, to catch up with you, till what was uncomfortable yesterday becomes natural today. Keep doing it. What is natural today becomes comfortable tomorrow. It also grows. Don't live within the comfort zone. The comfort zone, therefore, is your worst enemy. Pack your luggage and come into the second zone now. What is the second zone on your way to growth? The fear zone. You've now managed to convince yourself to do something with your life. To learn a new craft. To learn a new trade. To improve your tajweed. You come into Navi, huh? the fear zone. 
all of a sudden you can't control the variables here. There's things that will challenge you physically, challenge you mentally, and your brain therefore starts blocking those happy chemicals of serotonin and dopamine. And instead it starts producing stress-related hormones like adrenaline and glutamate. You're now afraid, you're distressed, you're anxious. So most people, what do they do? They quickly scurry back into the comfort zone. This huge inner debate ensues inside of you. And you start hearing things like, I can't, and I won't. It's impossible, like, I don't have the talent. What will people say? No, I'm not used to it, it's not me. You're just getting all these error messages cropping up in your mind. The good news is, alhamdulillah, here's some reassurance for you, brother, sister, is that if you are patient, this fear zone, as we just said, doesn't stay forever. You find your feet, it becomes natural to be there. Actually, it becomes comfortable, the borders have grown. Now you're coming into the third zone the growth zone. That's where the Muslim wants to be. Success is bred there. Growth is bred there. Happiness, well-being is bred there. And one bit of advice to keep you there, my brother, my sister, keep learning. Minimize TV, wallah, minimize Netflix. Junk food is not what you consume through your mouth, it's what you consume through your eyes and ears. That is the worst form of junk we're allowing into our system. Keep learning, read, even if you don't like it, even if it makes you uncomfortable. We said we gotta get out of that zone. If you have to watch, watch something useful that will help you grow. Watch a beneficial YouTube lecture. Learn a new language, learn a new craft, learn a new trade. Keep learning. This is a salient characteristic of the giants. So you have the comfort zone, and you have the fear zone, then you have the, the growth zone. And here's what is interesting. You have two decks of people. You have a lower deck. May Allah protect us from these people. They are the people who live in comfort and laziness. And no objectives, low aspirations. That's the lower deck. And then you have a deck above them. They are the people who live in discomfort. But they are accomplished. They are growing. They are fulfilled. And subhanallah, both of these people of these decks, they are both mocking each other. They both wonder at why you are there. You should join us. So listen to the conversation between them. The lower deck, the people of comfort and low ambitions, they look at the deck above them and they say, what are you guys doing there? I mean, haven't you seen how comfortable our couches are? We have Netflix stream. We've got food and snack at, at our fingertips. We have Uber Eats. We've got Deliveroo. Join us. What are you doing there? We sleep long hours and our minds, they never ache. Our bodies, they never sweat. Our muscles, they never ache. Join us. This is the life. And for them, it's inconceivable that there could be a life better than theirs. Comfort. There's your drink, there's your snack, there's your TV, there's your phone, and there's your back massager. It's all there. But the guys on the upper deck, the people of discomfort, but high ambitions and growth, they look down at the lower deck and they say, what are you talking about? You want us to join you? Hold on a minute. Show us your arteries, please. Show us your veins. Show us your cholesterol levels. Show us your blood pressure levels. Show us the ever shrinking brain cells that you have and your ever shrinking muscles in your body. Show us your iman that is only getting weaker and your knowledge that is getting looser. Show us. You want us to join you? No, you should join us. Come see now the deck of ambition, the deck of growth, the deck of accomplishment. Come and join us. This is life here. We are the happy ones. Show us your recitation of the Quran. It hasn't grown. Your tajweed, it hasn't grown. Your circle of Muslim friends, they haven't grown. Your love of Allah, your iman, none of it has grown. You're the same person I met 10 years ago, if not worse. We are the people of ambition and happiness. Come join us here. And after all, your comfort, that's temporary. This comfort will catch up with you. And our discomfort, that's temporary. And comfort will catch up with us very soon. So make a plan to come out of your comfort zone. If it's a sin that apparently gives you peace and comfort, make your plan to come out of that comfort. A certain hijab that you are abusing, it's giving you comfort. Make a plan out of that comfort. A business transaction that's bringing you high returns, but you know it's a shady business deal. Make a plan to come out of that comfort. And remember, as we said, a, a ship enjoys being on the shore because it's safe there. But that's not what the ship was made for. The ship was made, made to sail in the sea and to battle with the waves. And success and failure have a cost, by the way. We are constantly told that success, you want to be successful, you've got to pay the price. It's not just success that has a price, Habibi. Failure has a price as well. The only difference between the two is that the price of failure is far higher than the price of success. So you choose which of the two you want to pay. 